What's up everyone, my name is Don and welcome back to GTA 3. On today's episode, I'm going to do Don Salvatore's missions. Or rather, I'm going to do one of Salvatore's missions and then go straight back to Tony's to deal with the triads, because things are heating up. Something I will say about Salvatore's missions is that they are a bit on the explosive side. This first mission is tamed in comparison though, it's called Chaperone. Hey Maria, move your butt. Dumbra does this every time. And here she is, the one and only Queen of Sheba. What were you doing up there? Whatever it was, I bet it cost me money. Well, you don't think I hang around here for the conversation, do you? Get in the car and keep your big mouth shut. Take the limo, but bring it back in one piece, you hear me? And watch her. She can be trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure your new lapdog has everything covered. And isn't he big and strong? Hey, Fido, let's go visit Chico and get some party treats. He's at the rail station at the Chinatown waterfront, I think. Oh, Maria. She is perhaps the dumbest character in the whole entire GTA universe. Second to wait from five. If you thought Catalina was the true villain of this game, then you're right. <laughs> but Maria inadvertently gets caught into deep shit. Anyway, this mission lives up to its naming convention that you have to drive Maria around in a stretch limo. Very durable, but it's very easy to flip. And also, this is the only GTA game, or I should say 3D GTA game, where you can't bail out of moving cars. No, you have to wait to come to a dead stop before you can actually get out of a burning vehicle, which could lead to your demise if you're not careful, or quick enough. Even the advanced game that came out three years after this one lets you dive out of vehicles, which is kind of weird because that game is just a downgrade in every sense of the word. But, oh well. my favorite lady! You looking for some fun? A little, hmm, some spank? Hey Chico, nah, just the usual. Here you go, lady. Hey, maybe you should check out the warehouse party at the East Side of Atlanta Keys. Thanks, Chico. See you around. Gracias. And enjoy! That's good stuff! Come on, Fido, let's go and check out this pod. My name is Cloud. I mean Klaus. I mean Claude. They never call this guy Claude in game, by the way. They always give him some sort of Ace Combat nickname. For some reason, because... I don't know, Claude was just too convoluted. Anyway, Spank is a drug that I guess you can call a mix match between cocaine and meth. And... That's really bad for Liberty City, and if I were CJ, you know damn well he'd be trying to get it off the streets as soon as possible. <laughs> Spank is important to the plot, and there is one mission in the game later on where, I swear, I don't even know how this got past the 9-11 censorship, but somehow it did, and it's in the game. Our next objective is to take Maria to this party which is at the docks in this warehouse. Okay, why this stank-ass warehouse? <laughs> that, that is just... The potential for anything sexual harassment related just went up tenfold. My name is Claude, and you really don't have a butt to shake. Look at these door guards. They must hate their jobs, just standing by this club on the shore, on a foggy day no less. Words of wisdoms, just quit your job, there's more to life than this. Ah shit, who called SWAT? Was it you, door guard number two? Don't you lie to me. Yeah, it was door guard number two, he looks like a snitch. Get in the car, Maria. I may hit your guts, but you're the Don's wife, and my feelings be damned, apparently. Maria loves to live dangerously! Is she... is she high again? Oh, that is a dumb question. Of course she's high on spank. The next part of the mission is to just get away from the cops. You don't even really need to go to the pants spray. You could just go to Salvatore's and you'll be okay. The cops aren't really that aggressive. And actually, I'm just getting more opposition from the cars that are getting away from the cops. <laughs> get out of my way! And that guy I just ran over had, like, Almost a thousand dollars, if not more, on his person for some reason. It's not like I need the money from a dead person since I'm getting paid throughout the entire game. And oddly enough, this is the only GTA game where you can actually get money from blowing up cars. Well, 
Okay, maybe not, since I don't even know if GTA 1 or 2 has that mechanic. I have never really played those games that much, so... Yeah, I'm just speaking strictly from this game forward. This is the only game where you can actually get money from blowing cars up. You know, I enjoyed myself for the first time in a long while, and you, you know, you treated me really good with respect and everything. Well, I better go. I'll see you around, I hope. I still don't like you, but I'll take the 10k though. What I'm going to do now is finish up the last two Tony missions before I move on with Salvatore. The war between the Italian Mafia and the Tria is heating up and I'm the only one to stop it. Tony is right down the street and the fascinating thing about Tony's next mission is that you actually have partners for this one. I say partners in quotations because they're more like cannon fodder and they die really easily. Here, but he left one of his sugary love letters for We're you. We're at war. The Triads have a fish factory as a front. Most of their business goes down at the fish market in Chinatown. The laundry still owes us protection. They reckon the Triads are protecting them now, so I say we exact a fitting punishment. Take those boys over and whack the Triad warlords. Hell, if you get a chance, pop some of their soldiers too. This mission here is oh, what the hell? <laughs> Jesus, I barely started this mission and there's already chaos. The Triad has just invaded Little Italy and it, trust me, it's nowhere near as chaotic as in this footage because crap, man. <laughs> Get off of my damn lawn, you crazy kids, before I put a cap in your ass. Oh god, Claude is sick of this shit. Oh, there's a car, finally. Get in, lackeys. Like I said before, you have two other guys helping you and they're... Pretty useless. <laughs> they help out where they can, but they'll die easily. Good thing is, you don't have to keep them alive to keep the mission going. You could just leave them for dead, basically, and still complete the mission. <laughs> so from this day on, I shall call them Donald and Goofy because of how useless they are. Anyway, the goal of this mission is to take out three targets while at the same time keeping yourself alive from all this war and death and destruction that is happening and occurring right in front of you and all around you. I'm not even going to bother keeping my teammates around. That guy was rich too. God damn it, why can't I pick it up? The next target is in this parkway area. Quickly get this guy and get out, it can get dangerous. And because of the little pillars on the sidewalks, I need to shoot the triads on foot, which is not ideal because of the wacky aiming system. Oh god, get out of there! These guys have Uzis, and if you're far enough away, you can avoid them relatively easy, but be careful if you're close by them. There we go, not a scratch. I take that back. The last target is at a warehouse at the shore. You're going to need a triad fish pan in order to get through the barrier. Oh yeah, I forgot, there's a barrier guarding the warehouse. And if there's too much chaos like what's going on right here, you could just exit Chinatown and then come back. This will despawn some of the mobsters and triads. And essentially give you a couple of seconds of uh, wiggle room, I guess. What I should have done is go get health or body armor, but it all turned out good. I know what I'm doing. I've been playing this game since late 2002, early 2003. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've been playing this game for a long time. That's, that's pretty much what I'm getting at. It was not the first PS2 game I ever played, though, like a lot of people. I think my first PS2 game was either Tekken 4 or Ace Combat 4. It was a Namco game. I, I'm not sure which one. It was on the Christmas of 2002, and I got those two games in particular, and I wondered to myself, five-year-old me was wondering, why does Santa Claus need to go to Best Buy? Because there was a Best Buy sticker on one of the boxes. Yeah, Santa Claus wasn't really a thing after age five because I caught on really quickly. He was more like a character from The Nightmare Before Christmas, and secret of mana. But anyway, back on subject. You definitely need the Triad van in order to get through that security gate, which I don't know why they don't ins inspect the vehicle any further to see that it's a white guy in the van instead of an Asian guy. <laughs> but I digress. No, you stay down. I'm not risking you shooting me in the back. The last mission from Tony is called Blowfish. 
Okay, I've had enough of this shit. We're gonna finish the triads and liberty once and for all. Eight balls rigged a dust cart with a bomb. It's on a timer. So if you mess up, there'll be no evidence. Go and pick up the dust cart. Careful. Eight Ball says it's real sensitive, and the slightest bump could set that thing off. Their fish factory will open its gates for a dust cart, so you can drive right in. Park up between the gas canisters and get the hell out of there. I want it to rain mackerel. We're talking real biblical here. Nothing low budget. About that warehouse, I'm gonna blow it sky high. This time, Claude has to disguise himself as a garbage man. Fish fans won't work this time because the fool me once rule. The garbage truck will be at 8 balls and you have to be careful driving it down the road. The bomb inside is super sensitive and the slightest nudge against something will set it off and you'll die in a fiery explosion. There's also a time limit too, just in case you weren't nervous enough about sitting on top of a bomb that could explode at any minute. It will explode at any minute if you take too long. 2 minutes and 30 seconds to be exact, so you have plenty of time to get down the road without killing yourself. Hopefully. Unless you're just a bad driver. GTA 4 has a similar mission called Rig to Blow, in which Nico had to drive a dump truck to a Russian mobster's garage and blow it up. That mission was a tad bit more forgiving in that the bomb was a bit more lenient and um, it's not as sensitive to touch as in this game. And there was also no time limit. Not to say that that mission was without its tension because there are plenty of weird moments in GTA 4 with that one. Like the fact that traffic could literally just spawn in front of you from out of nowhere. Or, I don't know, the car physics in general in GTA 4. I heard that people don't like car physics in Grand Theft Auto 4 because it was too floaty. But anyway, the Trash Master here is slow and it's clunky. But the good news is, it's low center of gravity, you can't flip this thing over. I mean, you could try to flip this thing over if you want to, but it will take some effort. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just not even possible, considering the shape of this thing. Just an average trash man with a bunch of weapons and a baseball bat. You know, that's one thing that I don't like about modern shooter games, is, um... The fact that you can only carry two types of weapons, a long gun and a pistol. Whatever happened to stuff like, uh, I don't, oh I know Doom still does it, but whatever happened to games where you could just carry any weapon you want at any time? Come on, just give me two pistols, three assault rifles, a Moonraker laser, some throwing knives, and maybe a rocket launcher. Why does everything need to be Call of Duty with the two weapons thing? Excuse me, I'm trying to set up a bomb. Damn, rude ass triads. <laughs> what you're supposed to do is drive into that blue marker and set the bomb by pressing circle and just get out of there as quickly as you can. Never put your fuel tanks in an exposed area where people can get to them. Anyway, back to Salvatore for the last mission of this video, which is cutting the grass. Wait, we're doing personal lawn work for Salvatore? What the fuck is this? Leave us alone for a minute. The Colombian cartel is making spank somewhere in Liberty, but we don't know where. And they seem to know everything we're doing before we do. We got us a rat. There's a guy named Curly Bob who works the bar at Luigi's. He's been throwing more money around than he's earning. He ain't pimping or pushing, so he must be talking. He usually gets a taxi home after work, so follow him. And if he's ratting us out, kill him. Claude's got that swag in his step. <laughs> that walk can put our card to shame. Anyway, this mission is a telling affair, which I hate telling people in video games. I swear, Assassin's Creed, there's like every two missions, there's a telling mission, and I just can't stand it. And this game probably has the worst telling mechanics of all time. Basically, there's something called a spookometer, or spookometer. And what it is, is basically a bar that lets you know whether or not the guy sees you or not and I swear that bar fills up so quickly if you just if you're even near the dude he's onto you you could be a fair distance away and the bar will still creep up from out of nowhere and fail you the mission you have to be at least 
a half a block away from the person you're telling. GTA Vice City and San Andreas would unfortunately keep the spookometer for whatever stupid reason, because I guess people liked it. But I guess it was fixed because it was slower to move in those games, but still, you have to not be up close to the guy. Anyway, Fuller just got rid of the spookometer entirely, and it went with a more obey the traffic laws set of rules, otherwise you'll get caught. Which I prefer more than a spookometer, because why would being close to the guy alarm him? Unless you're doing something stupid like honking the horn or crashing into stuff. But then again, I'm not a criminal nor am I paranoid, so maybe mobsters just live differently. I'm really tempted to play background music from another game here because I can't play the radio. Get out of the way! That person just dove into the road. In all these games, you just like diving into the street. They, they want suicide by car. I, I can't help it, I'm just gonna give it to them. <laughs> they're, they're asking for it. This Curly Bob character is going to meet that special somebody. And by special somebody, I mean Claude really wants to put a bullet in her face. It's Catalina! This guy will turn left into the harbor, which I always known go to the harbor, but you can't cheat the system and go straight for the harbor. You gotta chase the taxi down. For some stupid reason. Because tailing missions. Here comes our little friend, Mr. Big Mouth himself. Were you followed? You know what goes on here is our little secret, Amigo. No, no, I, I wasn't followed. You got my stuff? Here's your spank, Squealer. Now talk. Okay, so the Leones are fighting wars on two fronts. They're in a turf war with the triads, with no sign of either side giving up. Meanwhile, Joey Leone has stirred up some bad blood with the Forellis. Every day they're losing men and influence in the city. Salvatore's become a dangerous and paranoid. He expects everybody and everything. And with loyalty like yours, what has he possibly got to worry about? Whack Curly Bob! Oh, you don't have to tell me twice. If you confront him on foot, you gotta be careful. He's got a shotgun. The mighty shotgun is to be feared. So I'm going to take the car with me. Couldn't even get a shot off. You, my friend, don't deserve the mighty shotgun. Anyway, I'm back with more videos. Thank God, it's been like a month. Thank you guys for sticking with me and um, being patient with my struggles and my bloated work schedule and me having to move to a different state. <laughs> but I'm back. I'm back and I'm coming back on Wednesday with another GTA video. So there's that. So tune in for part six where I have to finish up Salvatore's missions. Thank mm -hmm. you.